Hi, I'm Ethan. I'm a senior at McLean High School in McLean, Virginia, and my project is about the online learning of smooth functions. So first, what is online learning? Well, in a lot of machine learning, you'll have a learner that tries to learn from some data, and you might, in neural networks, for example, get a big batch of training data on which you train first, and then receive test data where you track the performance of your refined model afterwards. So in online, le online learning, this isn't the case. Instead, every piece of data serves as both training and test data in a sense. So you get small pieces of data continuously and you update your model in real time to improve with the new trends. And this is helpful in when you're trying to track things that change over time. For example, a company using like an algorithm for ad placement might want to use online learning so that every time a user buys a product or does some search, you can use that to refine your model and make just the slightest change to your model so that you'll make better predictions in real time. This is also useful for things like tracking weather, where you might have long-term trends in like climate change. And in this case, your predictions will shift over time naturally. And so this will help you refine your model. So in our case, we're tracking the online learning of smooth functions. So functions here are really just quantities that depend on some inputs. So for example, in the temperature example, you will have like inputs like the humidity or the wind, pre wind speed or the pressure, and these will all combine to give you a temperature. So uh, our question is basically how well can learners track these kinds of quantities? So to answer this question, we have to do some definitions first. So what's going to happen is your learner on each trial will get an input, which is the set of inputs like the temperature or the, sorry, the wind speed, the pressure, and so on. And then it'll try to make a prediction for the output, the function, which is like the temperature in our example. And then after that, you'll get feedback, which is when you learn the actual temperature and you make your model, you change your model based off of that. And so based on this feedback, you also get an error term, which is kind of a penalty for bad models. So if you are pretty far off the target, you'll get a larger error term. And so our question will be formally to minimize this error uh, over like all these possible algorithms. So to do this, we introduce some parameters P and Q. So P is changing the error formula. So for larger values of P, the error formula is more generous, which means that you'll have an easier time learning. And for larger values of Q, the class of functions they will have becomes less and less chaotic. So for example, when Q is one, you'll have functions that vary all over the place. And these are much more difficult to model. Well, when Q is very, very large, you'll have functions that are much smoother, and these are easier to model. And so previous work has looked at especially large values of Q where the functions are relatively smooth. And so in this case, they've shown that it's pretty easy to learn these classes of functions with reasonable, simple algorithms. Uh, our work extends this by showing that even when Q is very small, so you have more chaotic functions, you can still learn very well, and the error terms will still decrease pretty quickly. And we also generalize this to functions that are not just on one input, but multiple inputs. So graphically, this would look something like you have a 3D space and you have a curve kind of like that instead of in just a XY plane. And we've shown that in this case, you can still get some results in which you uh, the errors get smaller and smaller. And so in practice, this is helpful because this means that you can refine your models by seeing whether more inputs need to be added or not based on whether you're learning effectively or not. And so in the future, we might try to extend this by looking at other values of P and Q and trying to better characterize kind of how the error terms look like and also trying to find some better algorithms for learning in the multivariable case, which will help us refine models further. So thank you.